all engineers know that they don't know everything and that things may not behave exactly as science predicts. That's why they always use confidence intervals and error margins in their calculations. But we software engineers don't have this luxury. Our realm is logic and not physics, and slightly wrong doesn't exist in logic. Still, there's very little we can trust with all the moving parts our programs interact with. Networks aren't reliable, disks might fail randomly, and those pesky users keep making mistakes and feeding incorrect data into our beloved applications. We have no choice but to take that into account. We have no choice but to become paranoid. However, being paranoid, having no trust in anything whatsoever, is very exhausting. It can really drive one mad. Fortunately, a strong type system and functional programming principles can help make our lives much easier. With them, we can clearly express the possibility of failure and nicely compose rich and robust data validation systems. And hopefully, we can remain paranoid without going crazy. Hello and welcome uh, to 47 Degrees Academy and to the Scala DC Meetup. Um, if you have any questions during the talk, uh, use your um, the Q&A section of the channel you're using and we'll get back to your questions at the, at the end. So today we talk about functional error handling and validation with CAT. But as the video uh, introduction suggested, um, we, we will talk about making errors apparent in the type system, valid, uh, about validating data uh, with the CATS library, and along the way, we'll meet a few uh, famous type classes like Functor, Monad, uh, and so on. And before we dive in, um, let's talk about the trust issues we have as software developers. Um, what is trust? Trust is accepting something with, without asking questions, right? And that's something in our day-to-day -day job we don't often do. What is trust in, in the context of developing software? Well, to answer that, uh, maybe we should define self and not self or inside and outside. So in the following, when I say inside, I talk about the uh, CPU, the memory, what the compiler does with our code, and outside is everything else, the disk, the network, Really, really everything else. And once we, we have defined that, we realize that we have no choice but to trust what's inside. Of course, the CPU can fail or the memory can uh, flip a bit. But if that happens, there is absolutely nothing you, we can do. So we have to trust it. And on the contrary, we cannot trust anything from the outside because the disk may, may fail, the network is unreliable, unreli and so on. So that's, uh, that's, that's it about trust. And therefore, since we cannot trust anything, uh, except for the CPU and the memory, we have to become paranoid. That means that we, can, we, we must acknowledge the fact that errors may happen every time we talk to an external system, to something that is outside. And also, we cannot trust the outside to feed data correctly to, to be put on the inside. So we must validate everything that comes from the outside before it gets inside. So that's the, the, the thing with error management and validation. And as everything is broken, right, we, we should always follow this mantra that I suppose every one of you uh, have learned uh, in school or university or whatever. That is, we must fail fast and fail loudly. Meaning that we should always report errors as soon as possible and with as many de details as possible. So let's now take a look at how we can do that with the Scala type system and the CATS library. So first, let's talk about error management. 
Acknowledging the fact that everything is broken implies that we should always make the possibility of an error apparent in the type system. It's not only for the sake of it, but it's because it will give us um, some kind of free documentation about the possibility of an error. That is, if a function returns something that is uh, wrapped in a error advertising type, it says to the caller, which probably is ourselves in the future, that this function may fail. And also doing that, we, we can leverage the compiler to enforce, to enforce us to, to properly uh, handle the errors at the right time. So let's review how we can do that in Scala. Probably already know it, but the standard library provides us with a few error adv advertising types. Uh, that are the, the three main ones are option, try, and either. So let's dive a little bit uh, into them. So option is for representing operation that may fail to compute a, a, a result. So for example, uh, if we want to divide a number by another, there is one case where this might fail and fail re, uh, returning a result. And if it's the denominator is zero. So in order to be safe and to lift the possibility of an error at the type level, we just return an option of float as a result. If the denominator is zero, we return no, saying we are not able to compute a, re, uh, a division with zero at the a division by zero. And in the other cases, we uh, wrap the result in a sum. And this is safe as long as we'd never uh, call the unsafe methods on option, such as get and so on. Next, we have try. Try is for wrapping operation that may throw an exception. And try says at the type level, this is an operation that may throw an exception. For example, a IO exception when we are reading on, on, the, file, on the file system, or if we are passing uh, an int from a string, it might fail with an exception for every string that doesn't represent an int. So to safely pass an int, we should wrap it in a try because the two int method may fail by throwing an exception if the input string is not representing a number. And try has two cases, success and failure. The success will contain, in this case, an integer, and the failure will contain the exception that have been thrown during the passing. Next, we have either. So either is more general than option or try. Option is for returning an A. Option of A is for returning an A or a nothing. Try of A is for returning an A or a throwable. And either BA is for returning an A or a B. So that's why, because it's more general, it subsumes uh, try and option, we often prefer option either as a, our error advertising type. So we could go back to our examples using either. Um, on the division, uh, we can just wrap uh, the division by zero into a left and uh, providing a message saying you are trying to divide something by zero, won't work. And for the uh, integer passing, we can simply transform the try into an either. And then th this would give us an either a trouble and int. And so we have to uh, change the error branch into a string to return an either string of or int. So it is done by dot left dot map and the T parameter of map of the function inside map is a throwable and we can uh, message it into a string uh, to return an either string or int. But since now our functions that may fail return their results wrapped into an error context, be it option, try or either, and we are not allowed to use the uh, unsafe methods such as get, 
how can we use these functions? For example, I want to compute the average of a list of floats. So I want to use my division, my safe division. And how do I obtain the result at the end if I cannot use the get? Well, there are two answers to that question. First, we could try to unwrap this context. Uh, option try and either have various uh, methods for that. For example, option has a get or, get or else method. If I provide a default value to get or else, uh, it will return what's inside the, um, the option or the default value I provided to uh, get or else. More generally, uh, option try and either have a fold method. With fold, I just provide two functions for each branch, one for uh, treating the error case, one for treating the successful case. And if these two functions return the same type, then the fold will give me uh, a folded result and I will successfully unwrap uh, the context. But that's not always doable. Uh, I don't always have a, a sensible default or a way to uh, provide value uh, when something failed. So let's take a, a, a step back and look differently uh, at our uh, error context. There is a well-known metaphor about functions that may fail, it, it, is, it is to see them as railway, rail, railways. Sorry. So for example, a function f that written an either can be seen as a track that splits in two, uh, in two different tracks, one for the success case and one for the error case. And of course, I can, if I want, plug new computation on the happy path. So for example, here, the function g will be evaluated only if the function f returns a success. And if it doesn't return a success, the function g won't be evaluated. So I still have my error context. I have two tracks, but I still can do things with my successful results. And of course, if you know a little bit uh, about Scala and, and these option try and either uh, types, you would have recognized map. With map on option or on try or on either, I can pass a function that will be applied only if the context is successful. So only if the option is a sum, only if the try is a success, or only if the either is a right. And in any other case, the function I pass to map won't be evaluated. So that's nice. And that's very similar. Option, try, either, they all have a map function. So maybe there is a way to abstract over that and write only one happy path function. And in fact, in cats, we do have this kind of uh, functionality that allows us to abstract over this aspect of our error context. And probably you, you would have a recognized functor. A functor is characterized by, the, by a function map, a high order function that takes an f of a, here a cylinder with a blue triangle, and a function from triangle to circle and map produces a cylinder with a circle in the, inside it. So using functor, abstracting over the context, which is uh, here called f, it's a higher kind of type, we can write a single function, happy path, that will work no matter what the, function, the, the context f is. It can be option, it can be try, it can be either. So we de de delay the choice of this context to the later possible. 
But that's not enough, because sometimes we want to chain multiple operations that each may fail. So it would look something like the uh, animation going on, 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 this, on the screen. The, in the happy path, if both F1 and F2 uh, re re result as a success, we'll get this uh, green uh, hexagon. But we also want to remain uh, close to our mantra of failing fast. So if F1 results in an error, we must get an error at the end and F2 must not be evaluated at all. So this is done usually in Scala with the four comprehension. Let's imagine I have a um, service that, uh, that must, given a request, must pass an ID, an account ID inside the request and then fetch this account from the database and then re return the address that, uh, that is within the account. I can do all that within a four comprehension. And this also can be abstracted over with what we call a monad. So again, it's similar to functor, but this time the function f we pass to the flat map method returns a circle inside the cylinder. And at the end, flat map returns a circle inside a cylinder. That is a monad. And because of that structure, we understand that we cannot mix different contexts inside the same four comprehension. We cannot mix different monads. Or if you prefer, I cannot flat map over a cylinder and then a cube and then a pyramid, for example. Because if I play that animation again, we'll see that the f function is tied to this cylinder because it returns the circle inside the cylinder. So this chaining is tied to one single context. And that's why the code here wouldn't compile if pass ID returned a try and then fetch account returned an option because there is no way we can write flat map that's, uh, that works. So one solution around this problem is to unify everything in the same error context. And in fact, um, option and try uh, can all always be um, translated into an either because as I said, either is more general than option or try. So, for example, the code uh, displayed on the slide would translate the try result uh, of pass ID into an either, and the option of uh, result the option result of fetch account into an either. So that would work, but that's quite a lot of boilerplate. So there is something slightly better we can do. And it is to abstract over monad. As we abstracted over functor uh, previously, we can abstract over monad. We still must have only one monad, one context. But by doing this, we can delay the choice of the concrete monad uh, to the latest possible. And in general, in real life applications, this monad would be something more complicated than either because we would need to uh, account for our synchrony and, and stuff like that. But doing that, we can delay the cho this choice and have only one place where we have to write a boilerplate to convert uh, monads into, uh, into another. And there is even better in the CATS library. Uh, it's the type class called monad error that on top of monad adds the possibility of raising an error here and so we, we can write an, a purely abstract function that doesn't know in which context it will run, but gives us the possibility to chain operation that each may fail and also to raise an error 
during this process if something bad happens. So that was uh, that was it about uh, error, uh, error handling. Um, the uh, takeaway is to always wrap func result, function results that may fail into an error advertising type. And it gave you a few tips to how to combine these contexts. So now uh, let's talk a little bit about validation. So as we said at the beginning, validation must be applied to everything that wants to come inside our application. That is user input, but also configurations or messages sent by uh, other applications, or even messages uh, that we had serialized into a database or uh, stuff like that. And validation is about verifying some invariance on the data that wants to come in, and also, and even more importantly, about reporting all the encountered errors at once. Uh, for example, if you were on the internet uh, at the beginning of the uh, 2000 years, you probably have experienced very, very poorly designed uh, websites where you had a big form to fill, but errors were only reported one by one. So you fill the form once, it says the birth date is not in the right format. You fix the birth date, you validate the form, and then it says, Oh yeah, but the name uh, is too long or too short and so on. And it's very, very tedious when errors are not reported all at once. But for that, we need to be able to accumulate all the errors and to try everything before we report the errors. And that's not something we can do with a monad because a monad is about sequencing operation that depend on one another. But for accumulating all the errors uh, uh, that are produced by validation of a, um, a piece of data, we need to validate or try everything independently and then accumulate all the errors that we, we've got. So back to our uh, train metaphor, it looks like something like that. We have two independent operations, F1 and F2. And when both succeed, we want to combine the successful result into a bigger one. Of course, we also want to return an error if either of uh, F1 and F2 fails. So here, F1 fails, we just return an error. But also, we want to be able to accumulate errors. So if F1 and F2 both fail, we want to be able to have both errors at the end. That way, if we have many, many, many uh, different bits of validation, we will be able to combine them to create bigger objects or bigger errors, accumulated errors. So that's the purpose of the validated uh, type in CATS. If we look closely, it looks really, really similar to either. Validated E and of E and A has two, uh, two cases. It's either valid and contains a value of type A or invalid and contains a value of type E. So it's really, really isomorphic to either. But it only has an, an instance of this type class, applicative. Applicative is slightly different to monad because the function we pass uh, to app is a function from a triangle to a circle, but it is uncased into our cylinder context. So we don't have the dependency we had with flat map, right? Let's play that once, once more. You see, we have two cylinders, one with data, the triangle, and one with a function transforming a tri triangle into a circle. And we path both these cylinders to app, and it gives us 
at the end a cylinder with a circle. I won't dive into the details of, of that, but that's what allows for independent combination of uh, validations. So in CAT, when something has a applicative instance, you get this uh, star greater than uh, operator. And it allows for combining, uh, in, that, in that case, validations in a horizontal way. That is, for example, here we have two, two functions that returns a validation. One that checks that uh, the provided age is a positive number. And one that checks that the uh, provided age is major in the USA. And so we can, using both uh, smaller validations, write a bigger one that will make sure that someone can enter a liquor shop. A liquor shop. So it's here. Right. So what happens here is that first we will check that uh, the age is positive and then that it is greater to 21. And if, for example, we pass minus one to this function, what we get is a first error message saying that it must be a positive number and then a second error message saying that it is uh, lesser than 21. So that's the first way to accumulate errors. Another way to accumulate errors, probably more uh, useful for uh, the general case, is to compose validation vertically. Let's say we have a customer case class, which has only two fields, name and string, uh, name, sorry, and age. And say we want to validate uh, data that, uh, that is fed into the customer constructor by uh, checking first that the name is not an empty string and that the age is uh, greater to 21. Using this uh, mapping function, what we can do is make a tuple of our uh, two validations applied to the uh, parameters and then mappen takes, uh, it's an IR of a function, it takes a function going from the two uh, results of this into something else. And so in the end, if the name is not empty and the age is uh, greater than 21, what we get at the end is a valid of customer. And in any other case, we'll get all the errors that we've encountered. So if I call validate customer with an empty string and minus one, what I get in the end is two error messages saying that the name is empty and the age is lesser than 21. But to use these two syntaxes, the uh, star greater than and the map n uh, operators, I need an instance of applicative for my uh, validated. And this will only happen if I have a semigroup for my error type, because cats needs a way to combine the errors in order to uh, accumulate them. And this is materialized by the semigroup uh, type class. And of course, in real world uh, use cases, it's not always possible to have this semi group. For example, here, I have a rich type for errors, business errors, that lists all the possible errors in, in an application. And there is no meaningful way to combine these into bigger ones. So what can we do? Well, Cats also provides us with a type called non-empty list, which is basically a list that is never empty. And also for any type A, there will always be a semi-group for non-empty list of A. So if I change my error type to be a non-empty list or of something, 
I will always have a SUMI group for it and therefore validated using this new error type, non empty list of E, will always have an applicative and I will be able to use this uh, syntax we, we've seen before. And it's so, uh, so often used that uh, CATS also provides us with some um, shortcuts for that. Uh, the type alias validate, validated nail of E and A is basically a validated of non empty list of E and A. And we also have a syntax to lift a value into a validated nail, nail uh, with the valid nail and invalid nail uh, syntaxes. So that's it. Uh, whenever I uh, want to use an error type that is not a semi-group, I just use validated nail instead of validated and I'm good to go. And in the end, I will get either the result I was looking for or a non-empty list of errors. That's exactly what I wanted. Also, sometimes it doesn't make sense to do validations in parallel or independently from, from one another. For example, let's say we have an input that is a string and we must first pass it into an integer and then check something on the, this integer value. If the string doesn't pass into an integer because it's not a number, it doesn't make any sense to then verify, for example, that this integer that doesn't exist is greater to, to 21. In such case, we can use uh, the and then operator on validation to sequentially uh, compose some validations. And finally, there is one remaining thing that will be very, very useful is about validating collections. Let's say we have a function that goes from one element type, say integer, into a validated string and integer. How can we use this function in order to validate a list of string or a list of integer? We cannot use map because it will give us a list of validated and what we want is a validated of list. So here enter the last type class we will mention tonight which is Traverse. Traverse, as always, takes a um, value inside a context, a cylinder, and a function, but this time the function takes the value, the triangle, and returns the circle inside a new context, a cube. And Traverse will return us a cube, a cylinder within a cube, rather than a cube within a cylinder. So that's exactly what we want. So uh, in code, that's how it works. Uh, we have a, a validation function that takes a string and returns a validated of some error type and an int. We have a list of string and we just need to traverse this list with our validation function to get back a validated of our error type and a list of int. So that's it. And that's why uh, it's, a, it's a common joke in the functional programming community to say the answer is always traverse. Because most of the time, uh, if you have this kind of problem of things not being in the right order, traverse may be the, the answer. So let's summarize a few guidelines a bit about uh, validation. The idea of uh, the uh, validation mechanism provided by, by CATS is, as always in functional programming, to define small functions that will do small bits of validations and then compose them into bigger ones using the combinators uh, we have seen, like the uh, star greater than and then map n traverse, and so on. But validation is not about error handling. Sometimes we want to get back to our either 
or something more complicated than that. Because validation is about accumulating errors, but at some point we want to fail fast. We want to stop if something is wrong. So it's pretty tricky to, 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 to give a proper guideline on when we should use validation and when we should use either. But what's for sure is that at some point you, want, you need to get back to either because you need to have uh, something that will fail fast or stop a computation. Or basically what you need is a for comprehension at some point. And therefore, we, we are often finding ourselves moving back and forth uh, from a validation to either. And that's a little bit of boilerplate. But fortunately, in CATS, we have a uh, last type class uh, for today called Parallel. Parallel witnesses the fact that either and validated or other types are isomorphic and that we can go from, um, from the parallel version, validated, to the sequential one, either, back and forth. And so what we can write using uh, parallel, which provides us with the parmap n uh, function, is something like that. Say we have a validation function that returns an either instead of a validated, two validation function actually, and we can use the tuple.parmapn .parm syntax, which is very similar to the mapn syntax we saw, saw earlier, but that will, the result of this parmapn will be an either. So we don't need to do the transformation back and forth. Without parmapn, the equivalent will be to say, validate the age, transform it to validated, same for the name. So now you can use map n. And finally, you have to transform the result to either. So uh, that's a nice trick. You could use that and you would never have to mention validated. You will, it will be used under the hood, but you can write everything against either and still have error accumulation and uh, independent validations. So that's it. Uh, I will now move to the Q&A section. So um, in code at work, I've seen people use the uh, greater than, greater than operator. Is this different from um, star greater than? I think it is. Uh, I think greater than, greater than is about sequencing. So maybe I'm wrong, but I think greater than, greater than is an alias to and then. So if the first, the, the thing on the left to greater than, greater than fails, the thing on the right won't be evaluated. Hope uh, I didn't see anything wrong and that answers your question. Uh, does parmapn run, actually run the validation functions in parallel on different threads? No, it's not. It doesn't. Uh, parallel in that context means um, that things are independent of one another, but it's, it has nothing to do with concurrency and parallelism. It's not the same kind of parallel. It's more parallel, uh, like the tracks, the train tracks we have, uh, we were uh, showing earlier, rather than uh, multiple threads. What is the difference between map n and par map n? Both of them are running in parallel, right? So uh, I think it's similar to the previous question. Uh, they are not running in parallel they are running independently on, on one another. Meaning that in either, when you write a for comprehension, things are not independent of one another. Because if the first operation fails, the second one won't be evaluated. In mapn and parmapn, they are run sequentially by the CPU. But if any of both fail, 
it doesn't prevent the other one for, for, from running. So that's what we mean here with parallel. But maybe it would have been better named independent or something like that. So I'm not sure there is another question. Oh, so C code below. Test one and test two return different results. My question is why uh, validated and either behave differently? So test one. Uh, this one is tough. I don't think there is enough code for me to 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 answer because I uh, I would need to see what's the behavior of both uh, because tuppled is just a function. No, I'm sorry, I don't think I can answer this question. Uh, but feel free to uh, post me a DM on Twitter or, or on the Academy Slack, and I can. Uh, I can answer and, and chat a little bit with you uh, later on. So that's it, I think. Uh, I think we don't have any more questions. So.